Hello there. It's me MD, with you here, on Saskiano. And here we are again with a new After Effects tutorial. Today if you are interested to know about working with layers, blend modes, and effects in Adobe After Effects, this is the best place to be. So stay tuned. Now, if you want to follow along with me, in this tutorial, I am working with the After Effects project file. UFO Part 2 Project You will find this project file with the media associated with this tutorial. You can download it from the link down below in the description box. After downloading the project file, just double click on it to open it in After Effects. Now that you've imported assets to After Effects as we did in the previous tutorial, the special effects shot that we're trying to accomplish is relatively simple. It have been shotted as a wide-angle, lockdown shot of Manhattan from Eagle Rock, New Jersey, which offers a spectacular panoramic view of New York City. We're gonna composite some convincing full moon footage into this scene to give us an excuse to zoom into our large background. After a few seconds, a UFO will fly through this scene and will animate our views to simulate a camera following the move. And to finish it all up, we'll add some effects to make everything appear as if it's really in the same scene together. We will wiggle our camera to create a more convincing handheld camera effect. And we'll add some audio to help sell this story. The first step is to combine our elements in the big background comp. Starting with the background movie. And our moon movie. Make sure the playhead is on the first frame of the comp. In the first segment, we notice that the moon clip is a different size and running in a different frame rate from our background layer. We don't care at all because After Effects is happy to combine elements of different sizes and frame rates in the same comp. You'll see that the moon comes in at its smaller native resolution, which is fine. I'm going to scale it down a little more, in fact by just dragging a corner point while pressing the shift key to constrain proportions. If I watch the info panel, as I drag, I can get feedback about the scale. And I'll stop when I'm just a little above 50%. Next I'll drag the moon to this area slightly left to the center of the comp. I will also zoom in slightly using the roll wheel on my mouse, or if I don't have a mouse, I can use Control plus and minus here on Windows, or Command plus and minus on Mac OS, or I can use the zoom pop-up at the bottom of the comp window. And even though the space bar is used to start and stop playback, it can also be held down to quickly access the hand tool which allows us to drag with the mouse to reposition the screen, which we'll do now to arrange the screen like we see here. Down on the timeline, you'll notice that we now have two layers, the background and the moon. If you're familiar with Adobe Photoshop, a lot of what you see here may look familiar. You can turn visibility on and off by toggling the eyeballs. Change stacking order just by dragging. If you play around with this, make sure the moon ends up back on top. And if you click on the toggle switches and modes button at the bottom, you can even reveal all of the familiar blend modes from Photoshop, which allow you to mix pixels together. Unlike Photoshop, however, everything you do in After Effects is non-destructive by default. 
so you can always play around without fear of messing things up permanently. There are lots of switches and buttons in the timeline too. Notice these arrows to the left of the layer name. Click on the arrow for the moon layer. And you'll see some really important stuff. Click next to transform. And reveal the geometric properties for the layer. This is where you can fine tune how a layer looks. And even animate these properties. If we make sure our modes are visible by using the toggle button. Choose one of the light modes, which occupy the second section. I settled on Classic Color Dodge, which I like because it picks up some of the underlying grain, which will help sell the final composite. This is obviously blown out, and the layer creates a noticeable sharp edge. But fortunately, both of these things are easy to fix. Let's start with the sharp edge making sure the moon layer is selected. Choose the rectangular mask tool and drag out a rectangle that's wide as the layer, but not quite its tall. It should visibly clip off the bottom of the moon by Excel. Once you've done this, notice the new property has shown up in the moon layer called mask one. With this open, find mask feather. Click and drag this value up to about 180. This solves our hard edge problem, but may seem like overkill. Fortunately, it also makes it seem like the moon is emerging from a soft cloud, which I like. Now let's see how it moves. Next let's take down the opacity of the moon, it doesn't need to be nearly this bright. I'll drag the opacity down to just over 50%. It's looking better, but there are still some light spill and color bleeding that looks artificial. Some basic color correction effects will fix that. Applying effects in After Effects is easy, the effect the menu lets you easily rummage through hierarchical menus to see the hundreds of effects and filters available to you. Once you get to know what's in there, you'll probably prefer the Effects and Presets panel. Because of its nifty search feature, if you click in Search and type Levels, for example, you can quickly locate the Levels filter and apply it by dragging it from here onto the layer, either in the timeline or the comp window. This automatically opens up the effect control panel over here, where we can interact with a levels filter, just like in Photoshop. In this case, we're going to drag this top left triangle to the right, which will clip the darker pixels to black and get rid of the extra haze. There's still a little unwanted blue color overwhelmingly the effect. So let's go back to the effect and presets panel. And type. U. To bring up the hue saturation effect. Since the moon layer is still selected, we can apply it. By simply double clicking it. And then drag the saturation slider down to get rid of the blue. This is looking pretty good. While we're still zoomed in, let's preview our moon effect by tapping the spacebar. Once the moon gets going at full speed, we can see that it's already starting to look pretty nice. And now here we go, we are done for today. Do not forget to subscribe like, share, and leave your comment down below in the comments section. See you next time in a new tutorial. And if you want to learn more about After Effects, take a look here on the channel, we have a lot of tutorials. And if you are interested about Photoshop, Illustrator, 
Premiere Pro, in design. Take a look to our first channel, Everything PS. You will find its link down below in the description box. Goodbye.